good to see you again. Hey, great to see you. She's the principal of the school. anniversary of Earth Day, uh, which uh, started in 1970. It was actually, the anniversary was last Friday, but no one was in school last Friday because of uh, Easter weekend. So uh, what I decided to do, along with Commissioner Esty, uh, was to cel celebrate it by visiting one of the great schools of Connecticut. Does anyone know one of the names of one of the great schools of Connecticut? Like there you go. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, and I wanted to be here uh, to let you know that um, your generation, because we started so many years ago and thinking about our environment, is actually in inheriting uh, an, an, an environment nationally, at least within the United States, that has moved very steadily towards better environmental uh, control and policies. But in 1970, uh, when uh, I was growing up, and when I was, let's see, a, a, a sophomore in, in uh, high school, uh, things were very different. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a story. When I, I lived about 33 miles away from New York City, if I went into New York City to visit for a day, the pollution, the air pollution was so bad that, that you, could, you would actually get dirty on your skin or around your nose. Uh, particulate pollution um, would uh, would gather. That was true uh, when I visited uh, Rome, Italy um, in 1974. So we've made some tremendous progress in trying to improve our environment. Now we have a long way to go uh, and the reality is there are a lot more people in the world now uh, and we're actually burning more fossil fuels, that's oil and coal uh, and uh, gas we're doing a lot more of that than we than we did, but we have made important gains. Now, anybody here, do you recycle? I hope so. We all need to recycle uh, paper and metal and plastics. And I think in Connecticut, we're going to move more aggressively uh, at making uh, recycling easier and recycling more things as another way of improving uh, our environment. Now, I know you're going to uh, hear from some other folks uh, about our state park system, but one of the things that we do a lot of work on trying to make sure remains clean uh, is this blue area. Does anybody know what that is? What is it? Island Sound. Long Island Sound. Uh, exactly. Now let me tell you a story about when I was um, your age. When I was your age, that body of water was so polluted that many of the varieties of birds and fish that now live there had, had did not live there. So when I go anywhere and I live near the water, right across the street from uh, Long Island Sound, uh, for much of my life, I didn't get to see some of the wildlife that you get to see if you visited Long Island Sound, because I know you're working on uh, And thanking, I wanted to thank all of you and your principals and uh, your principal and the teachers and the teachers' aides in this school for doing, for proving something. You know what that? You know what you're proving? You're proving that urban education, city education, can work and produce great results. And that you're going to be as well prepared as children from other school systems are in their school systems. And that you're going to be successful in your life. So this is a day that I get to do two celebrations in one stop. I get to celebrate our environment. I get to celebrate the progress that we've made in improving our, our environment since the first Earth Day back in 1970 and to mark the 41st anniversary of, of uh, uh, Earth Day, and then I get to come and see a great school. So I want to thank you for letting me do that. Now I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Esty in just a moment. Do any of you have any questions for me? It's not every day you have the governor come by. You know. <laughs> or, or is it every day? <laughs> yes? Is it hard being 
Is it hard being governor? It's hard work, um, but I love to work. Do you like to work hard? Yeah, you're a pretty good reader. Yeah, but you have to work at it, right? You have to, you have to practice. You have to be at it all the time. And that's the way I love to work. So um, I'm very. It, it, it's hard work, but I'm very happy. Let's put it that way. Okay, does that make sense? And uh, he joined my administration. You know, I just got elected uh, last November, and I was just sworn in in January. Um, and a number of weeks ago, he, he joined my administration as the commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection. Actually, there it is. In the driver's seat, Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection. I thought I was in the driver's seat. <laughs> um, and, uh, and he is the commissioner uh, of that department. So he's charged uh, in uh, maintaining and taking care of our parks and natural resources and making sure that people are complying with the law um, and, and keeping our environment as clean as possible. Uh, he's, a, he's a distinguished individual. He was on the faculty um, and has now taken the lead from the faculty of Yale University, one of the great, great universities uh, in America down in New Haven where I'm heading in a couple of seconds. And so I'm very proud to introduce to you somebody who I think so highly of and I know is going to do a great job uh, as the Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection. And then come July 1st, we're going to add the issue of energy to his portfolio, to his requirement to do. So he's going to be head of the Department of Energy and Environmental uh, Protection. What are, the, what are the initials of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection? D E E P. Deep. So I give you one of the deepest guys I know. Well, thank you guys for letting me come and spend a few minutes with you as well. So the governor just told you that we have two issues we're going to be focusing on environment and energy. And they work together because who knows how we get energy? How do we get, what do we use for energy? Windmills is one way. We have a lot of those in Connecticut. Not so many. Um, but you're right, why, is, why are windmills good? They spin around and they clear the air. And, and how do we get electricity? By the wind, right? Yeah. Very clean. So how else do we get energy? Water. We also get it from water, that's right. We have flowing water, which turns, again, a turbine to get electricity. Who knows how we get most of our energy? Well, the sun actually does produce a lot of energy, but we are not so good at capturing it yet. We burn something. Do you know what we burn? Um, we burn coal. That's true. We've got that. That's exactly right. We burn coal and what are called fossil fuels. Do you know why they're called fossil fuels? They were made millions of years ago. Exactly. Stuff, plants in particular, died and became fossilized and then produced oil and coal and something called natural gas. By the way, this stuff was actually live at the time of the dinosaurs. You guys know that? It's been there for a long, long time. And in fact, you know we have a dinosaur state park? Have any of you been there? Have you been there? What did you see there? Um, How about footprints? Do you see any footprints? Yeah. There's some real live dinosaur footprints there. So this is right here in the center of the state. And uh, if you guys haven't been there, it's a great idea to go. So anyway, I wanted to talk about how we use energy to get around from place to place. How, what's the energy in our cars? Gas. Gas, that's right. Any, anyone know anything about the price of gasoline? What's happening? Um, the gas prices have risen up. They have risen up. Has anyone um, been with their parents when they bought gas recently? How much have you paid, you know? Four dollars a gallon is right. It's terrible. Four dollars a gallon. So one of the things we want to talk about is how we can get around using less gasoline. Because if we are paying four dollars a gallon, that's